All right, hello everyone. Uh, we're here to, um, I hope you're here to see a talk about Kubernetes and Aka. And I made the title of this talk, um, The Beginning of a Beautiful Relationship. And it really is, uh, but before we get into that, um, my name is Hugh McKee, I'm a developer advocate at a company called Lightbend. And uh, you may have heard of uh, some of the things we do. Uh, the most famous, I think, in many cases for us developers is we're the company behind Scala, the Scala programming language. One of our co-founders is the creator of Scala. In fact, um, just a couple week, weeks ago, we had Scala Days in Luzon and celebrate the 10th anniversary of Scala. And we also have a couple other open source frameworks called Play, which is a web framework, and Lagom, which is a microservice framework. But really, really, I'm here to focus on the thing I love the most about what we do at Lightband, which is Akka, and Akka actors in particular. And um, how many of you guys are familiar with Akka? OK, pretty good amount. How many uh, are? I usually ask, you know, I run into people that are doing Akka and I say, oh yeah, cool, you're, you're doing Akka, are you using Akka clusters? And that's where it kind of trails off. So a lot of people start using Akka because they, um, they're interested in perhaps in Akka streams, which is a feature of Akka. But in Akka actors, the actor system um, can span multiple machines, so it can run in a cluster. So Akka is also 10 years old this year, by the way, so it's, you know, it's it's been very, very active. We have engineers at Lightbend that are the, you know, the stewards and um, you know, the primary developers of Akka, which is, of course, open source. And, and there's many, many developers uh, you know, that are con contributors out there that are also helping to evolve Akka. So it's pretty battle-hardened at this point. But one of the really interesting features, and this is really what drew me to Akka in the first place, was Akka clusters. But the big thing that was really missing with Akka clusters was an orchestration layer. So Akka is great at handling things kind of at the actor level, handling things that are running inside JVMs, running in a cluster, but it didn't have anything to handle running the JVMs. And then Kubernetes came along and it's like the heaven's gate opened up for us because this was a beautiful orchestration layer for us to run a cluster in. So that's really what I want to talk about is this kind of, uh, in, my, in my mind, there's this love relationship of, you know, Kubernetes could care less about Akka, but Akka really loves Kubernetes. So just to start, when we'll look at Akka and Kubernetes in this talk, but I wanted to uh, walk you through, I thought, I think which is a really good definition of the actor model, which has been around since the 70s. Uh, it's a, like the first paragraph in, on the Wikipedia page. And it really, I thought it was just, succinctly and precisely summed up what actors do in an actor model. So the actor model is really um, a model of concurrent computation. And we'll see what that means in a little bit. And, and it's, but it's a universal primitive of computation. So it's kind of like a, a building block. You know, like you know, in this picture, I've got a Lego block, you know, Lego blocks. And so with Lego blocks, you can, you know, they're very simple. They have very simple mechanics. They plug together in, in whatever ways. But just like with Legos, you can do simple things, but you can do really um, awesome things with Legos. And it's the same thing with actors. With actor systems, and especially actor systems running in a cluster, you can do some really elegant, powerful things with, with uh, systems of actors. It, it's, a, it's a different way of thinking about building systems, but I know for me, once you know, I, I wrap my head around the concept of a an actor and how to use an actor and things like that, you know, it, I just, all of a sudden, you know, think, things started to click and I was amazed at the kinds of things that we could do. So with, with an actor, the only way to talk to an actor is you send in a message. And the analogy I always use is, it's like you and I texting. I send you a message, that's a, a, really an asynchronous message. Now how you respond to that message is up to you. I have no control over that, I'm just sending you a message. And I'm, I can continue on doing whatever I want to do. I'm not uh, you know, frozen, suspended, waiting for a response back. I may be expecting a response back, but that's the behavior that I built into myself. And how you respond to that message is things like, when you get a message or an actor gets a message, the actor makes a local decision. And some of those decisions could be, well, the actor could create more actors. 
and then th that actor could send messages to those other actors. And this is kind of a form of delegation. It's like, I asked you to do something by sending you a message. You create some workers for, your, for yourself, and you, you send messages to each of those workers, and they're all running in parallel, maybe doing tasks for, on your behalf. So you basically delegated work. So say, I get a message from somebody, and then I send messages to you, 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 and you, and say, can you do this, you know, task A, B, C, D. And then when you're done, say the, our deal is you're going to send me a message back. Something like that. But it's a form of delegation. The, a really cool f feature, though, is, and this is fundamental to the way actors work, and it's, it's one that's um, not used enough, I think, in, in ACA, which is actors can be, uh, change the way they'll respond to the next message. So a, a simple example is, say, there's an actor that's in a state, and say it's an idle state. It's just not doing anything, whatever that might mean for this particular actor. And then that, that actor gets a message and say, can you do this task for me? So that actor switches into an active state. So if somebody else sends the message, Kate, can you do this work for me? Now the response message back from, from say, you, you know, for me, when I switch from an idle state to an active state, is I send a message back saying, sorry, I'm busy, I'm doing something else. So it's this behavioral change that is quite powerful in the way actors work. And this is fundamental to the actor model, but it's implemented in ACA, the way things work. And in fact, uh, ACA typed is just coming out, which is a new way, it's a more strongly typed way of, of messaging between actors. But one of the really nice features of ACA typed is that the actor is always responding with a behavior. What's the, what is the way I'm going to respond to um, messages from this point forward? The other thing is actors are stateful. So actors are maintain their own state. And the only way to uh, change that state is for actors to get a message and the actor decides how to change his state, which is really pretty powerful. And this is a, a feature that people often use when they're using ACA for concurrency is that this is a very nice alternative to, from, to do uh, multi-threading, where you're not dealing with semaphores and locks and things like that because it's just kind of a natural way in the, in the ways, act, ways actors interact with each other. So anyways, this, I thought this was a really nice, quick, concise definition of actors if you're, if you're new to it or still kind of wrapping your head around it. But what I want to show you is really um, uh, something running. So I, I've got Minishift set up on my laptop. And Minishift is you know, the OpenShift wrapper on top of Kubernetes. The uh, one, one of the reasons I like Minishift, and I, I've, I'm working with some other folks as well on this, is that it's often a little bit easier to install than, say, uh, installing Kubernetes on your laptop to play with it. Regard I mean, basically, though, we're, we're running Kubernetes. So uh, one of the things that I got, uh, I've abbreviated, abbreviated it, Minishift, I just put an alias for MS, um, is, you know, I, I can get, uh, get commands or send it commands and one of the things is you know like it's up and running so I want to start up a console though and what this will do is it gives me a nice little web console which is pretty nice um, and I've got these different projects set up in Minishift and the one I'm going to show you here is is running is I just call it Aka uh, demo one or whatever. But the, the first thing I want to show you is I want to start up, show you the app that's running here. So I've got a, one of the things I set up, and I'll show you a little bit about how this was done, but uh, I set up a load balancer. And this is all running on my laptop again. So this is very elaborate network that's running on my laptop that I have no idea how it's working. Somebody that has more knowledge than I do um, needs to explain it, but it works. That's all I care about. So when I, once I got this load balancer running, I had got an endpoint to a to my app. Oops. So this is the a visualization of this app. So we're going to be walking through this visualization. And if anybody's looked at um, it's a JavaScript, it's implemented in JavaScript. So it's, and I'll give you the URL to this demo. It's an Akka Java Maven project that has this little UI front end. The, and we'll walk through what this visualization is. If you've, um, any of you played a little bit 
uh, with the D3JS. Anybody heard of that? It's a really cool JavaScript framework. I'm not a front-end guy, but I know enough JavaScript to be dangerous enough to do something like this. And uh, it's a very powerful thing. But what's happening here is we're seeing this system running. So you can kind of see things moving around and, and so on. And we'll, we'll do some more things with it. But um, it's a visualization of this system that, that we'll be taking a look at. So what's, what it is is that you know, somebody in my company, you know, they, they, they nicknamed this thing the crop circle. So I kind of like the, the, the name. I don't, I don't know if you guys are familiar with crop circles. It's supposedly when UFO, you know, people from other stars come to visit us and instead of, you know, talking to us, they just land in a field and do strange diagrams and leave, supposedly, right? So, but, uh, you know, this thing kind of looks like a crop circle. But what I'm trying to represent here is a lot of things. So in Kubernetes, the way Kubernetes works from the perspective of a Java developer, at least my perspective of, of a, what's running is, where are, my, where are my JVMs running? That's all I care about. Don't, and, and bore me with as few details as possible. And this is one of the things I really like about Kubernetes. So in this diagram, there's these three big circles off the center. And they represent the root of a tree of actors that are running inside of a JVM. So there's three JVMs running here in a cluster. That's what I'm trying to show in this diagram, okay? And we'll run three, we'll run five, we'll run you know, two and so on. I'll show you how things kind of change. But in Kubernetes terms, that you're running a pod. And a pod runs a container, like a Docker container, and the container runs the JVM. So it's kind of a wrapper, wrapper, wrapper. Um, but like I say, the, all, I, all I really care about as a Java developer is where's my JVM running. So in this case, we're, we're, there's three. Now the circles themselves, what I'm trying to show is some of the things that are running inside of Akka. So the little blue circles are the most interesting on the perimeter. I'm call, calling them as entity. They're, they're called entity actors. It's kind of a pattern in Akka that is used called cluster sharding. So these entity actors, as you'll see when we go back to it, they're coming and going. And what, I'm, what this demo project is doing is it's generating some internal traffic to kind of simulate traffic coming in, say, from an HTTP endpoint into a microservice. So you can think of this whole system, which is running in a cluster, as a single microservice. All right? These entity actors are handling actions that are being performed against specific entities, like an order or a bank account or you know, an IoT device. You know, so say this is an IoT system, and there's the device are sent, devices are sending in telemetry. Each device has, on the back end has its own actor, and it's maintaining maybe some state information about that device, or it's maintaining some state information about uh, an order. Okay, so these, these entity actors come to life when messages are sent to them to do some work, and they go away when messages stop coming uh, to them, and that's what we're showing in this. Now, the next most interesting actors are the green ones, and they're called shards, and this is part of cluster sharding. So you can think of the green ones. There's, in this demo, there's 15 of them. There's always a fixed number. So what they're used to do is to distribute entity actors across the cluster. And the adapt, as the, as the number of nodes in the cluster change, these shard actors redistribute themselves across the cluster, and, and we'll see how that works in a bit. And in the big circles, the three big circles uh, represent, you know, they kind of represent the pod, but there's also some single actors per JVM that are represented here as well. They're not quite as interesting as the entity actors are the main players, that's where the real business logic happens, and then the shard actors. So the, the, the little pink circle that kind of, hopefully it shows, yeah, the, the little circle that kind of poofs, that's an entity actor shutting itself down because it's bored. It hasn't received a message for a while, so it's, it shuts itself down. Now, again, um, what I'm trying to show is that one of these crop circles represents a microservice. So it could be a, one service in a collection of services. I'm not saying that every service has to be written using Oc or anything. Uh, it's just easier for me to create this little diagram, but you, you can think of this, what we're kind of diving into here is a single microservice running in a system of microservices. So let's go back to the, the demo. Um, so running along here, and on the console side, 
we can look at and control the, the number of pods that are running. So it, here's the, the console where it's showing that we've got you know, three pods running. And then back in my little crop circle, we can see that there's three. Now, I, just as a simulation, one of the things I can do is I set this up. If I click one of these big circles, that's going to send a message into the back end, and it's going to shut down the JVM, which is going to shut down the pod. So now we're down to two pods. But what we'll see is those 15 shards redistribute themselves on the remaining two pods, two JVMs. So the, the, the service itself is continuing to run, but now we're constrained back to two. Now, in the meantime, Kubernetes, and it's happening uh, probably too fast, Kubernetes is going, hey, wait a minute. This service, this deployment should be running with three pods. So it nicely goes, hey, here's a new one. So you can see that a, a, a third one just popped up. And then Akka is seeing this and going, oh, I've got more capacity. Let me start moving some of my shards over there, which will bring the entities over there. So it's a, it's a form of, of, of distributing, distributing the load. So we're kind of seeing, seeing this happen visually where um, it reacted to a failure. Say the machine or, or the VM or whatever that that one pod was running on failed. OK, Kubernetes knows how, how to deal with this. On, and I, I kind of call this on the outside. On the outside, Kubernetes is handling running our JVMs. On the inside, Akka is handling running the actors. And Akka knows how to react to JVMs coming and going from the cluster as well as, you know, and how to distribute actors within those, the available JVMs inside the cluster. The beautiful thing is where Ock is, is managing things for it. So say, for example, the, this microservice gets a spike in traffic. So Kubernetes has this really nice feature where you can auto scale. So I'm going to just do it manually, but say Kubernetes decides to scale us up to five pods. So you can see Kubernetes is going to start up two more pods. And those pods are going to spin up. This, it takes a little bit. I'm not using uh, Growl on this yet. Uh, but it, you know, it's spinning up the new containers. Um, they're starting up the Docker, you know, Docker containers. And then the JVMs are starting up. The JVMs start up. And, and in the JVM, you know, my code in the demo app starts up. And it goes, hey, I, I want to join the cluster. So this is where Akka says, you know, a new node comes into the cluster and goes, hey, I, want, I'm, I know there's a cluster out here. Can I join? So you can see a fourth node just joined. We, there's the fifth one. So now we got, we're scaling up to five. So Kubernetes has done its job. And now Akka sees, ah, I've got extra capacity. I know how to deal with that. It, it knows how to redistribute the shards. We're still at 15 shards, but we're, re we're redistributing the shards. So we're, we're redistributing the load. And Akka is actually kind of doing this. Um, it reacts quickly when things fail, but it's a little bit more gradual when we get more capacity. And we're kind of seeing it happening here in real time. What's happening here is this JavaScript client, which is part of this project again, um, is just using a WebSock, and every five seconds is doing an update. It's just you know the way I wrote it. So, but what now? You, now you can see that we, I think, we, yeah, we're evenly balanced. Where we have 15 shards, we have five JVMs running, and the shards have kind of evenly balanced themselves across the um, you know, the the five pods. If I go back to, you know, say the spike is over, and Kubernetes goes, okay, you don't need all that extra capacity. Let's scale back down to three. What we should see pretty quickly is, boom, those guys go away, and then Naka goes, oh, wait, wait a minute. Um, you know, I got those 15 shards, I got to redistribute it. But you, you can see pretty quickly the shards got redistributed on the, the remaining um, three nodes. So again, it's this really nice relationship between Kubernetes thinking about things at a more coarse-grained coarse kind of JVM level and helping us orchestrate at that level, the missing piece that Akka cluster really needed inside of Akka. This is a feature that's been there since like 2013, I think, is when Akka Cluster came out, um, where we could, uh, you know, actors could adapt to changes in the topology of the cluster. So this is really a, a nice definition or example of what's called a reactive system. You know, the term reactive has gotten really popular lately. Um, 
we helped develop what you know the reactive manifesto if you're not familiar with it you, it's a manifesto that's available on the web just go to reactivemanifesto.org but in the manifesto we talked about reactive programming but we also talked about reactive systems and reactive systems are fairly simple you know with the reactive system you're building a system that's always responding no matter what's going on behind the scenes so if things are breaking it, the system's still responding. If there's a spike in traffic, or the traffic goes up or down, you know, the, the system is still responsive. So it's really this responsive, resilient, elastic kind of capability that you're looking for in a system. And this is what we're getting now, really with this combination of Vaca and Kubernetes. So as I mentioned, this is just a, a project, and um, it's just a Maven project. Um, that I set up as a simple project, you know, some dependencies, but the, the thing I wanted to show you in Maven, the, the two things that were added was um, the, the shade plugin, which builds a, a big jar. It builds a self-contained jar, self jar. You know, it's got the, all my code and then all of its dependencies in a single jar. So like a jar jar, a jar that contains jars. So that's one plugin that was added to the, to the Maven Palm. The other one that's really nice as well is that there's a, um, I'm sorry, here it is, the Docker plugin. And the Docker plugin builds the Docker image. So you do a, a Maven clean package Docker colon build, and it you know, big, builds a big jar with all its dependencies, takes that jar and puts it into a Docker image and off you go. And so now we have an image. So it's kind of a you know, simple Maven build that, that creates this project. The, the, there's nothing really spectacular about this project other than it's doing some pretty cool stuff running on Kubernetes. Is, you know, in the main, there's where things are getting started up. I just got to have this class called Runner. The big thing here is, um, if you haven't done any ACA coding before, is uh, you, create, you, you create an actor system. And an actor system is kind of like a uh, thread pool on steroids. So it's, but it's really the, the you know, you, this is where ACA starts up and everything gets going. Um, this ACA cluster bootstrap is a couple lines of code down here that this is the code that it takes for the, when this note, when this JVM starts up, it creates an Ocker, uh, an actor system, and then it invokes this Ocker cluster bootstrap, and, and it, it uses that to announce itself to the Kubernetes application and say, hey, I'm here, can I join the cluster? And the magic of joining the cluster and forming a cluster happens in this Ocker cluster bootstrap. For us as developers, it's just a couple lines of code. And we'll look, look at this some more, but um, here's just one example of creating an actor. So an, an actor is, it's just, you know, it's just a class, and there's different ways you can write actors, but here's one way of creating an actor where you don't call the constructor on it, but you call, you know, the actor system actor of, and you give it um, this, what's called props, or like proper, I think of it as properties of the, of the actor. This triggers the actual creating, creation of an instance of the object, but running as an actor, as an actor in an actor system. The, uh, another example here below, another actor is created, and here I'm, one of the returns that's coming from the actor of is what's called an actor reference. And the actor reference is the, uh, location transparent URL to an actor, basically, an ACA URL. So if I want to send a message to an actor, you use an actor reference. And we'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. But this is, you know, there's, so there's one class in the, in the main where some things are started up. I'm starting up some actors. These are all actors that I just wrote for, for this little uh, demo. I'm using some out-of-the-box actors that um, come with Aka itself to do the cluster, what's called cluster sharding. But it's, you know, just, it's just an Aka uh, Java Maven project that I'm using here. By the way, you know, we're, 
I'm a, a ma minority at Lightbend. I'm at a company with, you know, the gods of Scala work there. You know, Martin Nordesky is the creator of Scala. He's one of the co-founders. And every engineer at the company is there because they love Scala. But I evangelize to the Java community, so I'm a, kind of a black sheep. So the, the, those entity actors, what's happening here is, you know, in the diagram, those blue actors, you know, the entity. So I, I tried to show in this diagram a little bit of what's going on. So say you're on your phone app, I'm on my phone app, and we're interacting with this system. You know, maybe we're building an order, okay, uh, as a simple example. So our requests are coming in through a load balancer, you know, typical. And, you know, we don't know where our, our requests, our HTTP requests are going to land in this cluster. And in this example, I'm, I've got a cluster of, of four pods. So each pod, each, each JVM can receive in, incoming HTTP requests. So a load balancer knows that, you know, that'll, you know, in whatever way it, it does it, it'll figure out how to send, send messages. So say you you make some kind of, you know, add an item to your cart, okay? And your, your cart has an ID. And in this simplex, simplistic example, say it's ID 64. So your HTTP request comes in to one of the JVMs. That request then is uh, sent as a message to your entity actor. Now there's other actors that are used to actually do the routing that, uh, that, are, that take over the burden. So when in the code that's actually sending the message to the actor, or to the entity actor, you're basically just sending a message. It's like, you, you guys are, um, you, know, you send me a message, and then this is kind of the, the delegation. My job, I'm not the entity actor, but I'll make sure that message gets to the entity actor. How I do it is my concern, not you as a sender. So I get this message and go, oh, this is for entity 64. I gotta figure out where entity 64 is. And it goes, I'll quickly kind of go through this, but it go, kind of goes through a strategy and actually talks to some other actors and goes, hey, where's 64 at? And it comes back and says, oh, it's on this other pod, the one in the bottom left. So what I do then is I forward the message to my counterpart running on this other JVM and this other pod. So say you're the other uh, actor that gets this message. So you get the message and go, oh, where's 64 at? Oh, 64 is on one of mine, you know, one of the ones that runs in my JVM. What shard does it run in? Oh, it's in shard, I can't see the number, but the, there's numbers here for each shard. So you know where to forward it. The shard gets it and goes, oh, is the actor for entity 64 around? Is it running? Oh, no, it's not. Let me start it because I got a message for it. So it'll start it up. Now, if, if it, you're, you're already running, say previous messages has come in, Entity 64 actor is already running, so the, the message is forwarded. This is what ACA does, and it's got like six years of, you know, doing this very, very efficiently. You know, things like, for example, um, there's one famous system that we know of at, at PayPal where they're handling like a billion messages a day on a, I think it's a, I don't know if it's a four or eight node VMs, two cores each. You know, so a billion incoming messages a day, and, and it's, you know, so there's, you know, millions and millions of messages being flown around very quickly. You know, things like, um, I think when we run tests, it's like 40 million messages per second per JVM between actors. So this is what ACA does, and it does this very, very quickly. Now, of course, when a message goes over the wire, we're at the mercy of how fast, and, you know, we can transmit messages over the network. But other than that, the latency is, um, you know, the latency is really if there's a network hub. On the other hand, say I'm, uh, I'm interacting with Entity 17. I do the same thing. An HTTP request comes in to the same JVM, looks around and goes, who, you know, where's Entity 70 or 17 at? Oh, it's on this machine. It gets forward and so on. So that's basically how things work. And when the the number of nodes that are running, the number of JVMs that are running in the cluster changes, all this routing gets handled instant, pretty much instantaneously within like a second or so because that's how quickly ACA is reacting to nodes you know, uh, leaving and joining the cluster, especially when they, when they leave. So all this routing and everything is, is all 
uh, as a developer, we don't have to really worry about that because there's other actors that, are, that we can use that come out with ACA to handle this for us. So let me show you a, uh, the code for an entity actor. Appropriately named entity actor. Now it's just, you know, just a class. This is the old way, it's, they call it untyped. I haven't had a chance to do the, this demo in uh, using the new archetype. The, the new archetype is the next release will be um, full, fully um, released. Right now it's, we're, we're calling it production ready, but something, we're not guaranteed that something might not change. So I kind of held off until it's you know, getting closer, really being fully released. But in any case, this is just a Java class. I'm extending uh, a, a base class called uh, abstract logging actor, so it, it gives me the behavior of an actor, and it, and it also gives me a, a quick way to get to um, do logging. And really, the, 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 the one uh, method that you have to implement is this one called create receive. So this is where uh, you, you program the behavior of the actor. And the behavior is, when it gets incoming messages, how should those messages be handled? So you can see that there's these match. So for example, match entity message command class. If it's, if it's one of those command messages, I'm gonna invoke this uh, command lambda. If it's a query message, I'm gonna invoke another method. So this is just basically how uh, things get into the actor to do something. So the big thing here, if you haven't done any ACA actors before is that no other code interacts with the code in this actor directly. Nobody calls methods, nobody creates an instance of an object of this thing. You create this as an actor, which I showed you a few minutes ago, and then you, um, you send messages to it. That's it. So that's the only way. And actors have a mailbox. So as messages come in, they go in the mailbox, and the actor just takes one message at a time and, and works on it. So it's like if all you guys sent me messages, all your messages would go into a mailbox and I'd be kind of chewing through each, each message as quickly as possible. So the idea is that you know, you're sending me asynchronous messages. My, my goal is not to block. You know, I get your message, I do my work, and I'm done. And I send you, maybe I send you a response back or not. That depends on how we, you and I say design the code to, to, to deal with this. Just, just real quick, when I get a command, this, again, this is just a simulation. I'm not doing anything with it other than kind of logging it. So there's some interesting logging that, that occurs. And um, I, the thing I wanted to show you is here is that I'm sending an acknowledgement message back to whoever sent me the command message. So again, this is by design by me. It's not a requirement of ACA. ACA just says how to handle, how can you receive messages and how can you send messages. So I inherited this method called sender, which is whoever sent me the message. I call the tell method, which is the method for sending a message. I build an object, this command ACK, and then on the end here I say, uh, this is who sent it. You know, like, so I'm kind of building um, you know, an envelope, you know, basically, or a message where it's got the, the to, the from, and the contents, basically. That's pretty much it. Oops. So again, there's this really nice relationship between what's happening in the inside the actor system, like here I'm showing that example where we're down to one pod, one JVM running in one Docker container running in one Kubernetes pod. And say Kubernetes decides to give us two more pods, so we, we uh, scale up. And then Akka reacts to that because of the way I set this demo up so that it distributes the work around uh, those pods. And when we lose a pod, it's, you know, Kubernetes say, you know, will say, like we saw that, oh, I lost a pod, let me replace it. And Akka is going, oh, I lost a node in the, in the Akka cluster, let me deal with that at the actor level. So it's this kind of, the, again, it's kind of the, on the outside, Kubernetes is, is running our JVMs on the inside. Akka is handling uh, the, you know, the things that it can do inside the JVMs. 
And those shards, this is just a strategy for, for distributing work. So I'm showing here that we're running on um, four pods, and one of the pods goes away, so those three shards need to find a new home in the cluster. And that's what happens. So there's a kind of a cool feature that I, I like to show people about um, actors and how you can do like this intra-cluster messaging. And it's so like the term is cluster aware. So the idea is that, and this is by design, you know, say we're developers and we design this and we go, we need this kind of, we need a, an actor per node in the cluster that knows how to talk to each other. So we know that there's that, that situation, that there's an instance of this actor, one instance running in every node in the cluster. And with that knowledge, it's fairly easy to write the code to do some form of messaging. So it's these, these kind of cluster where you know, actors where one actor knows that it can send messages to the other actors, the same actors running on other nodes. And in this demo where I used this was building this tree that's being sent to the, the GUI, to the front end. So the, the fun thing here is that um, in this example, say there's an actor, when the, the dark blue circles represent actors that have just started. So when an actor just starts, one of the first things it does, it sends a message to another actor and it says, hey, I'm here, I'm in, you know, I'm in, add me to the tree. And this is a tree thing that I, you know, something I did in my code. Well, the, what it does is it sends a message to another actor, there's a single actor per node that is, that's building the tree. When that actor gets it, because, okay, now I know to update my tree, but I need to notify my compatriots across the cluster. So what it does is it forwards that message to the other, its counterparts across the cluster. So the tree is being built in every node in the cluster, effectively. Because I don't know where my, my browser is gonna hit. So I wanna have the same view of the tree regardless of where you know, the HTTP request comes in from my browser. So this was a trick to do it. Now, imagine trying to do this on your own. You know, we're talking about doing things across the network. We need to know about what nodes are running in the cluster, all these types of things. The code to actually do this is pretty trivial. So in the, in, back in the end of the actor, um, part of the, th one of the things I do is that when I know that the actors just started up, I invoke this method called notify start, just something I wrote. And in notify start, I create an action um, message. And this action message, um, I, what I do is I do, um, I, I send it to an actor that I I've, have the actor reference called, and I call it HTTP server. So there's another actor that receives this message. So the end of the actor is done. It started up, it built the message, and it fired off to another actor that it knows about. End of the actor is done. If we go to the HTTP server actor, go up to where it receives messages in the create received method. So here's where incoming, that incoming message comes in, uh, action. And so I invoke this method I called action entity. Action entity gets that message, logs it out, and it looks at, it looks at the contents of the message. And this is something I just set up. Again, if it contains the, um, the action start, then it's going to add the entity to the tree. If it contains the action stop, it's going to remove the entity from the tree. But then, if the message says, hey, forward me, it's a little flag in the message, then it's going to invoke this method called forward action. So forward action, this is where the fun begins. In for forward action, I go into a loop on the nodes in the cluster. And that's done with um, some Akka objects that I can get a hold of. So I, you know, there's this cluster object that I got from the actor's, actor system. And then I get a, a list of the members, and for each member in the list, I loop through it. And I just take a quick look at the member. If, the, if it's not, my mem if, if it's not the, the, the node that I'm running in, you know, if it's not myself, and that other node is up, 
you know, so I can check, is this the letter of the node up? Because they have state, it could be up, it could be starting, it could be stopping, it could be, you know, something. And everything's good, then I'll invoke this method called forward action, which is down here. And forward action, basically what I'm doing is building a actor URL. And I'm taking the, the member name and the path to the actor, which is my path, I'm kind of building a actor URL, which is called an actor selection. And then I'm doing a tell. So in this loop, this is, this is the code, these two methods, to loop through all the other members in the cluster and forward the message to them. So an entity actor started on my node, I got the message, I updated my tree, and then I sent the same message to my counterparts across the cluster. They get the message. Now when they uh, get the message, when I send the message to them, I, I turned off that forward flag. But this is just by my design. It's not anything Akka happened to do. But in any case, the end result is you know, we're getting this ability to do something like this, which is um, you know, sending, easily sending messages across the network you know, with you know, about 10 lines of code. So I did that. So there's also the concept of a cluster singleton, just real quick. Um, cluster singleton is a single instance of an actor that um, is only depending, it'll, 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 there'll only be one no matter how many nodes are in the cluster. So if the node that that actor is running on goes away, the singleton actor will be started somewhere else. This is sometimes used, and I've used it in some uh, projects. I have some example projects I'll show you at the end of the talk where um, you need to make a, a kind of a cluster-wide decision. And you want to make it so that there doesn't have to be an agreement or anything like that. It's like you delegate the work to the singleton. Hey, singleton, make a decision for me. But you, so you send a message to the singleton, and the singleton sends a message back saying, here's the result of my decision. And that comes into this demo that I've been running is called cluster sharding. And the idea is that um, there's the, when, a, when you need to send a message to an entity actor, you send it to a, a local shard region actor, and that's the, shard, that's the actor that handled all the routing that I talked about earlier. And this is kind of leading into um, doing event sourcing and command, command query responsibility segregation, which I think there's a talk coming up right after mine that I want to sit in on. Anyways, um, that uh, the entity actors are, are ideal for handling events coming in, you know, a command comes into the actor, which is a uh, request to do something, it's, it, it's something that hasn't happened yet, you know, please add this item to my shopping cart. When the item is added to the shopping cart, that event is persisted in like an event store, and then the state of the entity is updated, you know, it's changed. So the shopping cart now contains, say, a new item in the shopping cart. So the, what the entity actor is doing is it's handling these, these commands coming in, it's validating those commands are okay, and then it's committing or, or, or persisting those events to some kind of event store, and then updating its state. So in effect, those actors are also a little form of a cache. Event sourcing, anybody doing event sourcing in CQRS? How many have heard of it? Okay, it's really, really interesting. If you're getting into microservices, and you want to break apart your database because maybe that's a battle that you're fighting, and that's a lot of battles that I know a lot of people are fighting. You, you, you're breaking apart the monolith at the code level, but you haven't broken apart the monolith at the database level. This is a nice pattern to try and introduce. So this is you know, really where thing, this is all leading. The, the, the cluster sharding is just kind of a, a stepping stone to doing more interesting things like um, event sourcing and CQRS in a single microservice running in a cluster of JVMs. So this is why Akka really loves Kubernetes. It's, again, it's the, it's the orchestration platform that it's been waiting for. I think we were kind of a little ahead of ourselves when, when Akka came out, where we had all this marvelous capability of, of doing things in a cluster of JVMs, but we were leaving the management of the cluster of JVMs to something else. And now that gap has been really closed with something like Kubernetes, which is very exciting. So these project, this project that I've showed you is available, and I'll, I'll, 
I post these slides, but this project is the first one. It's on my own GitHub, and it's just called Aka Java Cluster OpenShift. And then there's a series of other projects that kind of led up to this project. So the intent is you can grab these, clone them down to your machine, um, build them, and play with them. And it'll run a cluster. So it's got all the ingredients that, that are needed to run a simple cluster, including the configuration file. This was one of the things that kind of annoyed me when I was you know, playing around is you know, when I grabbed something um, to, to play with, you know, some other project, it seemed like it was um, fun to get it working. Here I tried to make it as uh, simple as possible. So I've been working a lot on the readmes. I'm really bad at that, so people have been beating on me on the readmes. So the readmes are really good, um, and I'm, I'm going to be uh, working a lot on the, the OpenShift one, but there's sufficient documentation in there to do it, uh, including the visualization. So I know other people have taken this project and, um, and used it because the visualization is such a powerful way to show people what's happening and kind of explain yeah, see this little circle here? This is what it's doing. And, and instead of just kind of, before I'd be waving my arms around going, you know, there's this cluster thing and it's, oh, it's really cool. And it, it, people are looking at me, what the heck is he talking about? You know, um, the visualization I think is a lot more powerful. So if you want to kind of take something and demo it to yourself and maybe demo it to your colleagues, um, that's the intent. The other projects don't have the, the GUI front end yet. I was thinking about doing it, but I'm a fanatic about logging. So there's a, you know, I tried to make the logging very readable, where you can see what's happening in the cluster as nodes come and, and uh, join and leave the cluster and how the cluster forms. There's logging that shows that pretty clearly. And it's also showing you know, some of the activities that are going on with these, these things. But each project, you know, the first one is a very dead simple, like one single actor project, and it progressively builds up to this OpenShift one. Um, I've also written a little O'Reilly booklet. If you're interested in uh, just here, you know, kind of learning about ac uh, actors without any code, but just kind of actor think, it's a quick read, lots of pictures. Uh, it's, it's free to download. And I uh, thank you very much. We got just under two minutes for any questions, if anybody has a question. And I'll be around today. I, I have to leave tomorrow, but I'll be around today. All right, thanks.